please welcome our 2023 residential advisors and new student orientation program leaders. Please welcome our esteemed Columbia University alumni.
And now, please stand to welcome our Columbia University faculty, staff, and participants in today's convocation ceremony. seated. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> it's not, not only the NSOP uh, the student volunteers who can have energy, we can all have energy together, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jessica Marinaccio, and as your Dean of Undergraduate Admissions and Financial Aid, and as the person who signed all of the admission letters that you worked so very, very hard. <laughs> so very, very hard to earn, I want to officially welcome you to the Columbia community. You are finally here. <laughs> Joining me on the stage today, our president, Manoush Shafiq. <laughs> <laughs> Executive Vice President uh, for Arts and Sciences, Amy Hungerford. <laughs> Dean Surratt of Columbia College. Dean Chang of Columbia Engineering. <laughs> Sherry Wolf, President of the Columbia College Alumni Association. <laughs> Columbia Engineering Alumni Association President, Alexander Patu Leakey. and NSOP coordinator, Carolyn Rodriguez. <laughs> also joining us. <laughs> we have 
very excited students here. <laughs> also joining us are distinguished alumni, esteemed faculty, dedicated staff, and as we have already experienced, committed and enthusiastic student volunteers. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All, all of us, all of us gathered here for the purpose of welcoming you on this special day for our entire university community. Special because convocation is the ceremony where aspiring Colombians finally become truly Colombians. Welcome, class of 2027. Today, today your first official day at Columbia is the culmination of years of effort, accomplishment, and dedication. A day when it may seem that your hopes and dreams have been fulfilled. But in fact, this is a day when hopes and dreams just begin to take shape because education is about inquiry and challenge and promise and change, leading to new hopes and bigger dreams that you might not yet even know exist. This evening, you stand on the cusp of an experience that will change your life. Consider the loved ones beside you and those wishing you well from afar. What they all share is the desire to support the incredible journey you embark on today. And of course, family and friends, this is a big day for you too. A challenging one maybe, but one which I hope you will embrace with great joy. And so we proudly welcome you too into the Columbia family. Class of 2027. <laughs> Class of 2027, you sit here before me because in all the tapestry of who you are, you are Columbia. You, your story, your Columbia story begins today. And as someone who knew you a little bit at the beginning, I will watch how that story unfolds with great anticipation and admiration. Welcome again officially to the Columbia class of 2027. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you to the families for all the support that you have given and thank you for choosing us. I would now like to introduce NSOP coordinator, Carolyn Rodriguez. <laughs> Carolyn is the student leader coordinator for this year's new student orientation program. As a member, yes. As a member of Columbia College's class of 2025, she is studying, she's studying architecture with a specialization in urban studies. Outside of academics, Carolyn works closely with first-generation low-income students as one of as one of the student coordinators for the Fly Students in Multicultural Affairs. She is also, she's also part of the Academic Success Program, and I don't, uh, I don't think I need to say, give her a very loud, robust welcome to, to the podium, but please put your hands together and, and welcome Carolyn to the stage. <laughs> Love 
too. Thank you, Dean Marinaccio, for the introduction. And welcome, class of 2027. I'm so happy to help represent the entire NSOP team and introduce you to your new home for the next four years. We are all so proud of your hard work thus far and excited for you to join this unique ecosystem, Columbia University. <laughs> but before you fully embark on this new adventure, please assist me in giving a warm thank you to all of our crew captains, orientation leaders, committee, and residential advisors that have helped make your Columbia Day run smoothly. Yes, we love Res Life. <laughs> After tonight's ceremony, you will finally be able to meet your orientation leaders, and they're all so elated to introduce you to the Columbia community, as well as welcome you to the beginning of the new student orientation program, better known as NSOP. <laughs> this week, we'll introduce you to what it's like to live in the concrete jungle, whether that, yeah. Whether that is through navigating the city with Explore NYC, yeah! participating in acts of service with care, yeah! immersing yourself in the art scene with arts and media, yeah! or escaping the city and seeing some scenic views with co-op. On behalf of the committee, OLs, and CCs, I am so excited to see your roots grow. Yeah. <laughs> this year's NSOP theme, Growing Roots, is all about grounding yourself in this new environment before budding into the new you. Throughout college, you will have the chance to participate in new opportunities while also facing challenges as you grow, so we want to give you all the resources and support that you may need to flourish and have the most of your college experience. Columbia is your new terrain where everyone relies on each other for success, and NSOP is your very first opportunity to create those bonds and grow roots in this new community. <laughs> Embracing the changes that are bound to come will be important, but so is being aware of our neighboring gardens and the way that we plant ourselves. Again, plant yourselves mindfully and cooperatively and give everyone the room that they need to grow. Through reflecting on my first year at Columbia and how I explored life as a college student, I have realized that growing roots was a very crucial part of my college experience. Coming from a very small community in Cypress Hills, Brooklyn, and an even smaller high school in the Lower East Side, Columbia was quite a big adjustment for me. I was a first-generation, low-income Dominican girl from Brooklyn at this, oh yeah, <laughs> at this prestigious university with many people from different backgrounds. As a result, I craved a space to feel welcomed, understood, and accepted. Like Dean Merck, um, that we briefly stated before, I'm a part of the Academic Success Program, which serves FLI students in their transition to Columbia, as well as giving me the first taste of community here, which I am very grateful for. Even now, as I enter my third year, I am still cultivating my community, and I'm still growing my roots. Yeah. Upon my arrival to Columbia, I felt completely surrounded with opportunities. With that being said, I still changed my majors about three times my first semester. And it wasn't because I was lost. It was because I realized that at Columbia, there were so many different directions that I could go in, so many places that I could grow my roots. And I felt a massive feeling of relief once I found my love for architecture, which came through taking advantage of courses across all four schools. I realized that not only am I the architect of my life, but I was also the architect to my new ecosystem. Soon enough, I felt rooted at Columbia, <laughs> and I found my alcove where I could flourish effortlessly without impeding on anyone else's space. Columbia students are dedicated and passionate people with many different life experiences and backgrounds, and that's what makes this space so meaningful for me. The air here at Columbia is, a special, is special, and the opportunities are like no other, and all it requires is a little exploration and an open mind. Now that you're officially here, bring those old memories with you, those old perspectives, and merge them into the new ones that you will be creating here at Columbia. You will soon see it now, Columbia blossom before your eyes once you accept everything in front of you. 
Let all of these culminate into a new rooted you and recall the people and stories that have brought you here and value this new journey that you're embarking on. Feel free to replant yourself here and we promise there's always enough space for you, class of 2027, thank you. Can we please give another round of applause to our wonderful student leader, Carolyn. I would now like to call forward Alexander Potuliki, president of the Columbia Engineering Alumni Association. Alex, who received his master's from CES in 2010, is a section manager at Con Edison, where he manages the teams responsible for operations and strategic planning of the electric demand response programs. Prior to this role, Alex held various positions in operations, planning, engineering, and project management at Con Edison, Sikorsky Aircraft, and the U.S. Department of Energy. As a licensed professional engineer, Alex holds a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Rensselaer Polytech, a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Columbia, <laughs> and an MBA from NYU Stern School of Business. Oh, no. No, no, no. All education is good. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming Alex to the podium. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Marinaccio. It's a lot of hate for NYU. <laughs> I can take it. Um, on behalf of the 48,000 living, um, living alumni of Columbia Engineering, it gives me great pleasure to congratulate you and welcome you, the class of 2027. To Morningside Heights. Nice. Today you join one of the most influential academic communities in one of the most dynamic cities in the world, and you begin a rewarding educational experience that will stay with you forever. I have no doubt that Columbia and our engineering school will play an integral part in your lifelong pursuits, and many of you will lead the way in creating innovative, real-world solutions that will forge stronger, more equitable society here. So, so Columbia faculty are world renowned for groundbreaking research and scholarship. New York offers unrivaled energy, culture, and industry that will serve to enrich your classroom learning experiences. And of course, you are students. You are among the best and the brightest. And together, these element, elements foster Columbia's vibrant community. Thank you. So, in your time at Columbia, I ask that you be mindful of your needs and leverage all of the resources available to you at this great institution. There are club sports, study sessions, the Career Center, and many other resources to help you navigate and, equally important, have fun. So, as you forge into this new chapter, build friendships and connections that will be a part of your support structure as you navigate your studies and beyond. Your academic experience at Columbia will be framed by this amazing city. Take advantage of all it has to offer. Visit the museums, sit in the park, relax, and try new restaurants. Go to new neighborhoods, see it all. Beyond the city and this great institution, the Columbia Engineering Alumni Association, or CEAA, is committed to supporting you throughout your lifetime, both as a student and after you graduate. There are a plethora of programs and events offered to, offering to meet and help you socialize with alumni. I encourage you to seek these out and learn from the experience of Columbians who have forged this before you. The alumni are very eager to meet you and help you guide you on your Columbia journey. Again, I hope you'll take full advantage of the tremendous resources available to you and that you will place priority on having fun and making connections along the way too. Welcome to the Columbia community. Yeah. 
So now it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Shifu Chang. Dean. <laughs> Dean of Columbia Engineering and Morris A. and Alma Shapiro Professor. He leads the education, research, and innovation mission of the school and has greatly contributed to its growth and advancement, propelling it to be one of the top engineering schools in the nation. As one of the most influential experts in multimedia, computer vision, and artificial intelligence, his research has led to the development of innovative image search tools, which have been used by major media companies and law enforcement agencies in fighting online human trafficking crimes. He's also launched AI tools for online disinformation detection and attribution. Dean Chang is a member of the National Academy of Engineering, a fellow of the National Academy of Inventors, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the Association for Computer Machinery, IEEE, and an elected member of Academia Sinica. He received his honorary doctorate from the University of Amsterdam and the Great Teacher Award from the Society of Columbia Columbia graduates. His inaugural, he is the inaugural director of Columbia Center of AI Technology in collaboration with Amazon. Please welcome Dean Chang. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, hello and welcome. Welcome to Columbia University. And welcome this special class of 2027. We have been looking for this special day for a long, long time. And your presence here reflects many, many hours of dedication and commitment, I'm sure. I'd like to congratulate all of you on the hard work that brought you here today. Congratulations again, everyone. <laughs> Every new academic year is special, and this year is particularly special. This summer, we'll welcome our new president to Columbia, President Manoj Shafi. We are incredibly excited about President Shafi's bold vision for us, Columbia, and this new chapter of the university. So you are beginning your Columbia journey at a very important moment, you have time your arrival at Columbia perfectly. Congratulations. <clears throat> As the Dean of Engineering, let me say a few words about this amazing school. I have the fortune to work for more than 30 years here. From the beginning, Columbia Engineering has been a school engaged with New York City and the world. Columbia engineers help build a modern city including building the first subway line in New York City. Do you know which one? <laughs> it's the one train which you might have taken in the past few days. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Edwin Armstrong created FM radio, which you may have used to enjoy music in the cars. And there is a historic landmark plaque in the philosophy hall in that direction there commemorating his historical invention. From x-rays to the mass production of antibiotics, Columbia engineers laid the groundwork for bringing engineering and medicine together to save lives and improve human health. Our former dean and provost, Mary Boyce, led a group of faculty members to develop a solution using new sensors, new process, and new technologies to fix the damages in the L train tunnel. I'm not sure you have the chance to take that train. And that the damage was caused by Hurricane Sandy a few years ago. And this helped avoid the year-long delay of the repair process and benefits millions of riders and passengers. <laughs> Throughout our history, we have been at the cutting edge of the most important fields of the day and that is still very true today. In areas like artificial intelligence, data science, biomedical engineering, quantum computing, climate prediction, and next generation computing like Web 3.0, 
Students are working alongside our faculty to gain new insights and bring these new insights to the real world. One of the greatest benefits of a Columbia education you are going to get here is the opportunity to live and learn in the greatest city in the world, as Alex mentioned earlier, New York City. Yes, I'm biased. We are all biased. I'm sure we will be very biased soon. <laughs> we are home to every industry, every art form with a diversity that is a match. And Columbia is a city within a city. You will be learning in and outside the classroom from each other as much as from your teachers. For the engineering students, you benefit from the renowned Columbia core curriculum and liberal arts courses, giving you a broader and deeper perspective. For the college students, you have a chance to take courses from world-class faculty at an engineering school. Such a cross-school broad curriculum is the unique strength of our university. Computer science faculty work with faculty in humanities and social science create a wonderful course called Computing in Context. Some of you and many of you will have a chance to take it. This year, we launched an exciting joint MBA executive MS program with the Business School at Columbia, providing unique training covering engineering foundation and business leadership skill. Next year, we'll launch a new joint ma master program in quantum, te quantum technology, together with physics department in art and science. These are just examples to show Columbia is the best place for interdisciplinary study and research. <laughs> Columbia will offer you an amazing environment to learn, to grow, and explore new ideas in solving challenging problems facing our world today. At engineering school, we have a bold vision called Engineering for Humanity. It keeps us focused on areas where we have the most positive impact and contribute to a more healthy, sustainable, secure, connected, and creative humanity. There's so much each of you can do to bring this vision to life, to support this vision, and make a positive impact to the world. Perhaps you will invent something at the maker space or in a design challenge or a hackathon. You might find your true passion when you participate in a student club such as Columbia Space Initiative, Robotics Club, Engineering Without Borders, Women in Computer Science, and there are many, many other clubs you enjoy. There are so many possibilities and opportunities ahead of you. As you continue your Columbia journey, you meet so many friends, mentors, and teachers that will become part of your lifelong network. This is an amazing community, and you're now part of it. Let's take this time before the classes begin to get to know one another and prepare for this wonderful journey. And you have your wonderful orientation leaders, OL, from UNSUP to support you this year. A big thank you to all our NSAP leaders. Again, congratulations to all of you, Class 2027. Welcome to Columbia. Thank you. I'll see you around. Thank you, Dean Chang. Yes, if we could please have a round of applause for Dean Chang. I would now like to introduce Sherry Wolf, president of the Columbia College Alumni Association. <laughs> Sherry graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Economics from Columbia College in 1990. While at Columbia, she was president of the Dormitory Council and chairperson of the Board of Managers and Senior Committee. After beginning her career on Wall Street, she received an MBA from MIT's Sloan School of Management in 1994. <laughs> <laughs> for, all, for the last 25 years, she has enjoyed a successful career in finance with a focus on technology markets. Today, she serves... 
Today, she serves as Chief Financial Officer for a technology company that was recently acquired by Bain & Company. Sure. <laughs> Sherry resides in Boston and has been president of the Columbia College Alumni Association since January 2023. For the last 10 years, she has been an active alumni volunteer, serving as a member of the Dean's Task Force, President of the Columbia College Women, and Co-Chair of the Columbia College Fund. She is also a member of the Board of Directors of Columbia Barnard Hillel. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming Sherry to the podium. Thank you, Dean Marinaccio, and thank you to this great group of NSOP volunteers for bringing all this energy to campus. I also want to give a shout out to all the alumni who um, came through in the, in the procession today to support this, this student body. Thank you. And of course, welcome to the class of 2027. My name is Sherry Wolf from the great class of 1990, and I'm honored to be president of the Columbia College Alumni Association. On behalf of more than 50,000 living Columbia College alumni, welcome to Columbia College. <laughs> 37 years ago, I began my own Columbia journey and was sitting where you are today. As a freshman in 1986, Columbia looked very different. I was in the first co I'm sorry, the first coeducational class graduated at the end of my freshman year. My class was much smaller, consisting of only 750 students. And our football team, well, it had work to do at that time. It was uh, it was saddled with the longest losing streak in NCAA history. <laughs> Yet despite the differences, like you, I felt excitement, but also trepidation. What would the next four years be like in this city that never sleeps? Would I fit in with this diverse and intellectual student body? Could I be successful outside of my small town high school? And I share this with you today because if you ask yourself any of these questions, you are not alone. The Columbia journey <laughs> is all about self-discovery and following the many roads with detours, twists, and turns. Your unique journey will not only transform you from the person you are today, but your journey is going to create lifelong bonds with those seating around you. My own journey did not resemble my initial expectations. My plan was to major in psychology, which I had written about in my own Columbia application. However, after taking my first economics class with a brilliant and dynamic professor who made the subject challenging, relatable, and applicable to the larger issues facing society, I was inspired to take a different path. Columbia pushed me to challenge my expectations and I ended up majoring in economics, and that led me to a 25-year career in finance. So as you begin your journey, I wanted to share four pieces of advice to encourage you to be open-minded and challenge your expectations. First, the people you meet at Columbia will be the most important part of your Columbia experience. I cannot... <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough that you will leave Columbia with connections to professors and lifelong friendships that are unlike any relationships you have had in your life. You are surrounded by 1,100 classmates who will inspire you and whom you will inspire. Whether the classmate sitting next to you today ultimately becomes your lifelong friend, perhaps your business partner, or even your partner in life, you will all be bound by your experiences as Columbia Lions. <laughs> Second, embrace the core curriculum. <laughs> I know you've heard it many times before, but the core is truly unique to Columbia 
And I don't think I even truly appreciated its value until later. It's a shared experience which connects all current and former students. Generations of Colombians have read the great books that speak to what a human being was and could be. Learning about art and music masterpieces broadens your perspectives far beyond Morningside Heights. The core will open you up to a new way to look at the world and prepare you for a world that is constantly changing. Third, challenge yourself and your assumptions. There are so many opportunities you can take advantage during your four years on campus. Take interesting classes. Try new things both inside the classroom and outside. Make your Columbia experience your own and follow your passions. Join clubs, campaign for student council, audition for the varsity show. Pl There's something for everyone on this campus and the only way to experience it is to push yourself to try something different. Lastly, and I venture to say maybe most importantly, get to know your Columbia alumni. I stand here today as a representative of the alumni community. We are here as another form of support, and we want to get to know you. Today, we're here to be your mentors and advisors, to provide you with connections, opportunities, and experiences. Four years goes by really quickly, and it will not be long before you can give back in the same way to future Lions. The Columbia College Alumni Association, the CCAA, has many programs to connect alumni with you. Take advantage of these opportunities and make it a part of your experience. On behalf of Columbia alumni, welcome to the Columbia family. Today is just the beginning of your journey and the alumni community looks forward to sharing it with you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to one of the inspirational people who will lead you on your journey here, Yosef Soret. <laughs> Dean of Columbia College and Vice President for Undergraduate Education. Dean Surratt first came to Columbia in 2009 as a professor of religion and African-American and African diaspora studies. Prior to becoming dean, he served as chair of the Department of Religion and director of the Center on African-American Religion, Sexual Politics, and Social Justice. Dean Surratt received his BS from Oral Roberts University his Master's of Divinity in Religion and Literature from Boston University, and his PhD in African American Studies from Harvard University. We are extremely lucky to have Dean Surrett's leadership. I have been most impressed by his intellect and his vision for Columbia, but also his sincerity and his commitment to the college. He is approachable, and willing to listen to the range of opinions of students, alumni, and faculty. His central focus is to lead the college so that you have the best possible experience at Columbia. Please join me in warmly welcoming Dean Surratt. Thank you, Sherry, for that kind introduction. Good evening, everyone. I join others in extending my own appreciation and welcome to President Shafiq at this, her first convocation, and to all of the faculty, staff, and alumni with us this evening. I want to add a special acknowledgment to Interim Provost Dennis Mitchell, who's joining us on the stage. It is a big advocate on behalf of undergraduate education. Thank you, Interim Provost Mitchell. This remarkable assembly is an inspiring reminder of Columbia's abiding commitment to the enterprise of undergraduate education, the very heart and lifeblood of the university. I want to also add 
A word of gratitude to our wonderful NSOP leaders. As Dean Chang mentioned the amazing things that New York has given to the world, amongst those art forms is the genre known as hip hop music and culture. It's only fitting that in what is commonly considered the 50th anniversary of hip hop that our orientation leaders are shouting, I know you feel it, but they are shouting can't stop, won't stop, and stop. There you go. There we go. I should not have egged them on. I should have. And to the class of 2027, parents, family, and friends, I'm pleased to offer my own welcome on behalf of Columbia College and a word of congratulations on arriving at this essential moment. We convene tonight to reflect on the journey of intellectual and personal discovery our students are about to embark on and to reaffirm the enduring values that will help define that journey. On the occasion of this new beginning, I'd like to borrow the words of the Greek poet Sappho, taking from Ann Carson's translation, if not winter, which college students will encounter in their lit hum reading in just a few days. The poems of Sappho survive in fragments, leaving tantalizing gaps and blank spaces with only the reader's imagination to fill them. More on that later. The fragment I'd like to focus on reads as follows. I want to say something, but shame prevents me. Yet if you had a desire for good, or beautiful things, and your tongue were not concocting some evil to say, shame would hold, your, hold down your eyes. But rather, you would speak about what is just. By the next time this group reconvenes for class day, a little less than four years from this evening, much that is impossible to predict will transpire. But some things are reasonably certain. You will form lifelong friendships with at least few of the people in this tent. You will explore the complex and dynamic that is your new home here in New York City, drawing strengths from it and inspiration from its unique energy. You will select the major in which to specialize your course of study. You will lounge on low beach behind us. And you will pass the swim test. But perhaps most importantly, you will engage with and build a thriving community of peers from different backgrounds, with divergent life experiences, with many who, at least on the surface, you appear to have little if nothing in common. More than any major you choose, club you join, internship you land, or research project you pursue, learning from each other, living with each other, and navigating the unfamiliar and the unpredictable these will be the cornerstone of your college life. This was certainly the case for my own undergraduate experience, where the complicated histories of race, religion, culture, economics, and so much more that defined my own upbringing in Boston followed me all the way from Massachusetts to Tulsa, Oklahoma. We have a couple, okay. Truly a world apart from what I knew as home. Confronting these tensions, often in ad hoc spaces outside formal educational settings, helped to set me on a path of intellectual discovery that led me to scholarship, to teaching, and eventually to addressing you here tonight. If I know anything, it's that my experience should not be confused as normative for anyone else here this evening. Yet I can say with confidence that what you encounter and what you confront here on this campus during these years will definitively shape the path that you make for yourself in the years and indeed in the decades to come. And the job of those of us on this stage, the staff, the faculty, the university leaders here tonight is to ensure that you have spaces and language to ask questions, that you are both invited 
and empowered to take risks and make mistakes and pursue your curiosity and that you recognize your value to one another and to the larger community. What each and every one of you bring is vital to the whole. In facilitating this holistic experience, encompassing the curricular, the co-curricular, and the extracurricular is a defining feature of the college's mission. You don't need me to tell you that we live in a time of change and upheaval, where many things we have taken for granted are being challenged. But there are some things that do not change, that should not and must not change. The convergence of disparate ideas, cultures, religions, ideologies, and identities represented under this tent is an essential source of our strength as a community and our commitment to fostering, to sustaining such an environment. A space of exchange, of debate, and inquiry is unwavering. And for the college, the locus and living embodiment of this of commitment to diversity of thought, dialogue, and exploration is that core curriculum. Student <laughs> students in my own contemporary civilization classrooms have grappled with profound questions of equality, authority, and difference, and community. And each of you will encounter and debate ideas that challenge both you and your professors. You will gain insight, understanding, and empathy. Your views of yourself and the world will evolve. But none of this will happen in a vacuum or in isolation. You will not and cannot do it alone. The core does not work with, without forthright collective engagement, with difference of opinion, a viewpoint of experience and interpretation. It's not easy, and the individual achievement many of us are accustomed to striving for will not always be the mark of success in this arena. The task is as much to listen anew as it is to speak with courage and creativity. And across the cacophony of voices, the authors in their texts that populate the syllabi that comprise our curriculum, and here I think as much about CC as I think about teaching a class on hip hop, what finds a contest of competing ideas rather than a clear consensus. If we're not disagreeing with respect, then we are not doing our collective jobs. In the The invitation to you is to forge out of these fragments and in a culture of free inquiry a deeply informed independence of mind. And in the face of that difference, even still, to my mind, a clear theme that recurs throughout the core, and that is that the proper context and end for the pursuit and acquisition of knowledge is community. The core at its best both raises this query and models this ideal. The pursuit of knowledge and community is not the pursuit of certainty, but the pursuit of more questions. To be a successful student, you must get comfortable with the uncertainty, with sorting through multiple conflicting interpretations and cultivating an ability to live in, better yet, move through a gray liminal space where there may not always be an obvious or easy right or wrong answer, yet more questions. Some of you may find this difficult, but you'll be buoyed by support from your peers, from faculty, from staff, from advisors, and from family around you. In the years ahead, you will move through the courses of the core and then into your majors, but the punctuation marks of grades and the ending of terms are just pauses. Our curriculum is by design evolving, incomplete, and it refuses a neat notion of fixity or finality. The enduring value of your liberal arts education will be the habits of mind you develop, the skills for critical, creative, and collective inquiry that you hone, which will enhance and extend the expertise you acquire along the way. These skills cannot be quantified, much in the same way as impossible to quantify the value that each member of our community that you work alongside will help you as you build them. If we do our jobs right, these habits of mind will become and develop into a living part of your intellect and a framework for engaging in the world long after you leave campus. Like the fragments of Sappho's poetry, it's for you to fill in the blank spaces of the future where there are rarely certain answers. You must fill them with your imagination, your experience, your curiosity, and marvel at the myriad and often surprising ways that others choose to fill in those same blanks. 
I implore you to revel in those differences. Celebrate the power of the new ideas. They can reveal and recognize each other's unique contributions to our community. Hold fast to your curiosity and the questions that drive you. Respect and nurture those qualities in others. And remember that you need never be ashamed to hold your head high. Look forward with clear eyes in the pursuit of good and beautiful things. Finally, before closing, I'd like to take a moment to address our parents, family, and friends with us tonight. The supreme joy of seeing your children thriving in this moment is no doubt mixed with the apprehension of letting go and entrusting their education, care, and safety to the hand of others. Tonight is a night that we feel all the feelings. As a father, I know something of what that means, and on behalf of everyone on this stage, I can assure you that our responsibility to your students and to you is not taking lightly. Thank you for your trust, for the remarkable job you have done in preparing your students for this moment, and for the ongoing support and love that will surely sustain them in the coming years. And so, Columbia College, class of 2027, I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday morning and even more around campus in the weeks, months, and years ahead with sincere excitement for the joy that journey that lies ahead. I leave you with my respect and my admiration. Good luck and let's go. Having been a proud member of the faculty for some 14 years now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to Amy Hungerford, the Ruth Fulton Benedict Professor of English and Comparative Literature, who serves as Dean of the Faculty and Executive Vice President of the Arts and Sciences. In that role, she is responsible, among other things, for nurturing the excellence of the faculty who teach undergraduates and for ensuring Columbia's standing as a great research university across the arts humanities, social sciences, and sciences. A scholar of 20th and 21st century American literature and the author of three important books in that field, she's also a devoted teacher. As a graduate mentor, she trained a generation of PhD and master's degree students who now work in higher ed, high school teaching, and publishing. Her open access online course, The American Novel Since 1945, has been enjoyed by learners and readers around the world since it was recorded in 2008. She teaches regularly in literature humanities within the core curriculum. Dean Hungerford joined Columbia as EVP and Dean of the Faculty in January of 2020, after 20 years at Yale, where she served in various roles, including head of an undergraduate residential college and Dean of the Humanities. Please join me in welcoming Dean Hungerford to the podium. Thank you, Dean Surrett, and welcome class of 2027 and your families. By this point in the weekend, you've surely felt that you have joined something much bigger than all of us. The scale of Columbia and of New York City can feel overwhelming, but get a good night's sleep and it will start to beckon. Who is that person? down the hall. I wonder what their story is. I wonder where that subway line goes. What goes on in that interesting building, on that inviting quadrangle, among that lively knot of people? Your curiosity will be on overdrive. And chances are, going way back, curiosity is a good part of what brought you here. Since one of my tasks is to welcome you on behalf of our faculty, those remarkable teachers you will meet next week, let me say, curiosity is what brought us here, too. Curiosity has fueled the research university since its inception in the late 19th century. You chose a college with an, a distinct relationship to research, while Columbia's core curriculum offers an unparalleled general education, you equally come to learn at the cutting edge of discovery. Curiosity to scientists, ec economists, and philosophers is a poorly understood facet of human experience. The word comes from the same root as cure, to care, to heal, to heed. 
It carries connotations of strangeness. It is the desire to know without knowing in advance the benefit or the cost of knowledge. Western culture frequently uh, has set curiosity into its foundational narratives. In Paradise Lost, a 16th century poem uh, by John Milton that is uh, frequently on the literature humanities syllabus, uh, Milton is at pains to throw some shade on Eve's curious desire to taste the unknown fruit in Eden's garden. Feminist revisions celebrate that trespass as proof of Eve's deeper humanity. Human beings spend significant time, energy, and resources to follow this feeling. Even babies and highly intelligent animals, think octopuses or your dog, will expend energy to explore their environments for a payoff that is not obvious, sometimes doing so even to their peril. Now parents, this is probably exactly what you've been worried about as you drop off your babies. Uh, class of 2027, we will make sure that you will be fine. But let's be honest. High school can be tough on curiosity. For high achieving students, that's you, it is hard not to keep your eye on the ball of results. And arriving at Columbia is of course a cherished result. You should be proud of your focus and your achievement, but also for the greater good of your education and maybe the greater good of the world, it is time for a reset. Time to nudge curiosity sleeping in the corner and see what she has to say. Curiosity does have results, despite her sort of snooty disregard of them. The social psychologist Claude Steele, who was once provost of this university, recently studied a kind of modern social stress he calls churn. Churn is what people feel when they fear they will be perceived, not for themselves, but through assumptions about a group, whether religious or racial, political or class-based. Steele discovered that an attitude of curiosity is a special antidote to the stress people feel when talking about hard topics in diverse groups. File that away for your seminar table. Just as surely as curiosity drives discovery for children or babies, it drives discovery at the edge of human knowledge. Last week, for instance, a professor in our biology department won a major grant to investigate afresh and possibly overturn the idea that the neural synapse is the foundation of our neurological system. The importance of the synapse is settled knowledge in biology, if there ever was such a thing, but clearly the hard problems of neurology, which include mental illness or the damage done by brain injury, remind us of how much we do not know. At Columbia, curiosity extends to asking, what if this thing that we have believed for so long to be true is in fact what is keeping us from understanding something we are still desperate to know? Because fundamental advancement of knowledge, particularly in basic science, can take decades to reveal its, con its consequences, curiosity fuels researchers in the here and now. Columbia believes in what can come of such seeking. And it is no surprise that support for this revolutionary look at the synapse comes from a national institute intent on some results focused on ameliorating neurological disorders and the effects of stroke. Research is more than curiosity, of course. It requires one to master what's known as a first step learning the fields of inquiry in sociology, Chinese literature, music, electrical engineering, prepares us to take that leap. If, like many students at Columbia, you find yourself eager to learn how to do research, there is no better preparation than to let your curiosity loose. The Columbia faculty will be there alongside you. Along with your classmates, they will be the best of companions in what should finally feel a little like play. No need to be anxious or to perform how smart you are. 
That's the beauty of curiosity. Even a child can do it. Just wonder what's beyond what you know. Start asking and start listening. Families, thank you for these glorious young people, for entrusting us, uh, them to us uh, for their next four years. Prepare to see them grow. First years, I wish you the most wondrous start at Columbia. Thank you, Dean Hungerford. At this time, I would like to introduce several, several of my colleagues here with us today. These individuals, along with the offices and staff with whom they work, support students in making the very most of their Columbia experience. Lisa Hollibaugh, Dean of Academic Affairs for Columbia College. Barkley Morrison, Professor of Biomedical Engineering and Vice Dean. <laughs> and Vice Dean of Undergraduate Programs for Columbia Engineering. Jenny Mack. <laughs> Jenny Mack, <laughs> Senior Associate Dean of Undergraduate and Graduate Affairs for Columbia Engineering. Andrew Pla. Dean of Advising, who heads up the James H. and Christine Turk Barrick Center for Student Advising. Kavita Sharma. <laughs> Dean of the Center for Career Education. Matthew Potashnik. <laughs> who along with being a spirited dancer is the Associate Dean <laughs> for Student Intervention and Family Engagement. Uh, and Kristen Krom. Oh, there, oh, there. Oh. <laughs> Hide, hiding behind me. <laughs> who is Dean of Undergraduate Student Life and obviously very involved with the New Student Orientation Program. <laughs> we hope that you will reach out and work with all of those introduced over the course of your four years here. I would now like to invite Dean Surratt and Dean Chang, uh, as well as Teha, Te Teha, I'm sorry, Teha, I'm missing, mispronouncing your name. <laughs> Teza Shri, Vijay Kumar, the Columbia College Student Co Council President, and Ha Young Jen, the Engineering Student Council President, to the podium for the reading of the Pledge and Code of Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we are honored to be here today. One of the roles of your student council presidents is to help facilitate the creation of academic policy within our respective schools. We are here to serve any and all academic needs or requests from students. Through the work of the student councils and with encouragement of the student body, both Columbia College and Columbia Engineering constructed a pledge and code of honor to help foster a community of academic integrity and to help remind us of the importance of honoring one's work while in college and going forward. Incoming students have already completed their academic integrity tutorials online and have signed their honor codes electronically. But to officially welcome you to our academic community and complete an important Columbia tradition, we are now going to introduce the Pledge and Code of Honor. Please turn to the third page of your programs, class of 2027, I ask that you now stand and recite the pledge with us in unison. <laughs> I, 
We, the undergraduate students of Columbia University, hereby pledge to value the integrity of our ideas and the ideas of others by honestly presenting our work, respecting authorship, and striving not simply for answers, but for understanding in the pursuit of our common scholastic goals. In this way, we seek to build an academic community governed by our collective efforts, diligence, and honor code. Please remain standing while we lead you in the rest of the code of honor. Please recite the code of honor with us in unison. I affirm that I will not plagiarize, use unauthorized materials, or give or receive illegitimate help on assignments, papers, or examinations. I, 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 I will also. There's one. I will also uphold equity and honesty in the evaluation of my work and the work of others. I do so to sustain a community built around this code of honor. Thank, Thank you. I now have the pleasure of introducing President Manoush Shafiq. President Shafiq is the 20th president of Columbia University and professor of international and public affairs. The former president and vice chancellor of the London School of Economics and Political Science, she is an economist, policymaker, and high edu higher education leader who has spent over three decades in leadership roles across a range of prominent international and academic institutions. Before her tenure at LSE, she served as deputy governor of the Bank of England, Deputy Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, Permanent Secretary of the United Kingdom's Department for International Development, and as the youngest ever Vice President of the World Bank. <laughs> President Shafiq received her Bachelor of Arts from the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Master of Science from LSC, and and Doctor of Philosophy from St. Anthony's College, Oxford. She holds a life peerage and membership of the House of Lords, a damehood for services to the global economy, an honorary fellowship of the British Academy, and several honorary degrees. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to our new president, Manoush Shafiq. Thank you very much for that incredibly warm Columbia welcome. It's an, incredible, it's an incredible privilege to welcome the students, families, and friends of the class of 2027 to Columbia. Like you, I'm also new to this campus, having started as Columbia's 20th president in July. <laughs> And I say as someone who has experienced a bit of change once or twice in my life, beginnings are exciting and hard and everything in between. They introduce us to new people and ideas. They challenge us to adapt to new situations. And they open our eyes to new ways of thinking about the world and our place in it. To the parents and caregivers and loved ones who are here, I share your pain. I have two university-aged children, and I know what it's like to feel proud, wistful, and a bit mournful all at the same time. To wonder why they're not calling home enough. Why you aren't getting any insight into what they're learning. And your, your hunch right now is absolutely correct. Everything really has changed. They've packed up their rooms, they've unpacked their belongings, 
it, and they've unpacked them in a new space and moved into a new home. And it can all feel a bit bewildering. My advice to you is have faith in the process. To all of you students, this is a rite of passage, a moment in your life that will be an important milestone. You are surrounded by many of the brightest and most inspiring faculty on the planet whose mission it is to train you in the art of thinking. Take advantage of the breadth of the opportunities offered here. Invest in friendships, build relationships with your professors, and delve deeply into the world of ideas. And by the way, it wouldn't be the worst idea to call your parents and loved ones from time to time. <laughs> to let them know how you're getting on and, and to continue to ask for their advice when you need it or even if you don't really need it. It will make them happy, trust me. I want to say a few words, <laughs> those are the parents applauding as you might expect. <laughs> I want to say a few words about choosing Columbia. Class of 2027, we made an identical decision over the past year. We considered the many paths that our lives could take and we chose the Columbia path. And some of what makes Columbia special is very obvious. This is a world-class research university. It is the oldest institution of higher education in New York and the fifth oldest in the United States. We have 17 schools spread over four campuses and 11 global centers. 90 Colombians have won Nobel Prizes. For, for centuries, our alumni have ranked among the most celebrated individuals in government, the arts, business, technology, media, academia, and almost every area of human achievement. Their numbers include not only four American presidents, but also five members of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Colombians are multi-talented, as of course we all know. We also have the core, which has been mentioned several times today. A distinctive undergraduate experience that connects students across Columbia College, Columbia Engineering, and the Columbia School of General Studies. And the courses of the core engage with the work of the Western canon and with the cultures of Africa, the Americas, Asia, and the Middle East. They will introduce you to influential books and ideas in literature, philosophy, science, history, art, and music. They will demand that you think critically and consider new perspectives and wrestle with profound questions about the human experience that have bedeviled the brightest minds throughout history. And importantly, you will engage with this material together. And in so doing, you will prepare for a life as an engaged global citizen, someone who acquires knowledge and debates with others to inform the role that you want to play in today's world. You're here to experience an extraordinary intellectual awakening, to stand on the shoulders of giants, to learn from their mistakes, and to make your own contributions. Look to your right and to your left, you, our students from all 50 states, represented by the flags on my right, and from over 100 countries, represented by the flags on my left. You are now all part of the Columbia story. You are now partners with all of us in creating what comes next. Let me say a few words about the role of the university. Universities and institutions of higher learning have existed for millennia, stretching back to the schools of ancient places like China, Egypt, Greece, and India. There's something special, even magical, about the tradition of students and scholars coming together to create these unique environments of learning. 
The challenge for universities has always been to stay rooted in these traditions while adapting and reinventing to fit the demands of the new era. In the late 19th and early 20th century, it was the Humboldtian model, named for the Prussian philosopher Willem von Humboldt, that shaped the research universities of the United States. And the central principle of the model was the union of teaching and research in the work of the individual scholar or scientist. And the idea was that teaching should be based on the disinterested search for the truth, and students should participate at however humble a level in this endeavor. They should not be, and you should not be, merely recipients of knowledge. You should join in its creation. And we find in this classic view that the university was meant to be a community of scholars and students engaged in this common task. And as we stand here in the 21st century, universities are reorienting themselves for yet another new era. It used to be that the primary mission of the university was to educate young people and create new knowledge in the form of scholarship and research. And the work was done when the student graduated or when the professor's research got published. Today, the critical questions we ask include, what are you going to do with the training that you've acquired? And how are you going to use the research you conducted for the betterment of society? Look behind me, it's a bit dark now, at the inscription on Lowe Library, which says, we want to be an institution that is cherished by generation after generation for the advancement of the public good. Now, I don't need to remind you about all the challenges that the world is facing at the moment. Challenges like climate change, poverty, conflict, and disease. At Columbia, we do our work with these global problems very much in our minds. And while you're here, you will have the chance to develop the skills to translate the life of the mind into real life. This is a place where you'll have the chance to pursue your own diverse interests. And you'll be able to engage with the artists and writers who populate our faculty to conduct independent research alongside, uh, alongside our scientists in their labs to cure diseases or to save our planet. You'll have the opportunity to see that work up close. And once you do that, it will change you forever. You begin to see things differently and imagine the role that you could play in advancing knowledge. So as you begin your undergraduate journey, think expansively about the kinds of experiences you want to have here, about the interests you want to pursue, and the scholars and researchers with whom you want to engage. And along the way, think long and hard about what you're going to do with these experiences when you graduate, and how, you br how you'll bring your skills and your knowledge to bear on the major problems facing our society. And don't be afraid to revise your thinking as your path evolves. Now this is a lot for you to all take in, and I want to stress that it's okay to feel a little overwhelmed right now. Many of you are used to being at the top of your class. In fact, I know that 95% of you are. <laughs> If you find that you're struggling, that's okay. That's to be expected. Make sure that you reach out and ask for the support that you need from your friends, your teachers, your families, your advisors, and the staff, all of whom are here to support you. You're about to experience a lot of firsts. For me, as a girl who grew up in southern climates, college was the first time I saw snow. <laughs> And it, it took me a very long time to accept the necessity of a down jacket and proper boots. <laughs> I had one roommate who introduced me to Joni Mitchell. Uh, <laughs> and another who didn't believe in owning a lot of clothes and strung a line for doing her daily laundry across our room. It's mind-opening meeting people who are different from you, who think differently from the way you do, who've been brought up in a different context and have different views. And you should expect to be challenged by these new perspectives, to debate ideas with which you disagree, and be willing to revise your beliefs in the face of new evidence. And at times, this may feel awkward 
and uncomfortable. And that is as it should be. That is what it feels like to be part of a culture that values intellectual inquiry and the free exchange of ideas. And that's what it feels like to be at the frontier. And it's how humanity has made progress over millennia. So over the past two months, I've been getting to know Columbia by meeting with people who work across our campuses, schools, and departments. And I thought I'd share with you a few of my favorite quotes to give you a sense of what awaits you. Here's one quote. I am better because I'm at Columbia. If you can imagine it, there's a high probability you can make it happen at Columbia. What I love about Columbia is its independent spirit, its lack of snobbery, its warm, its scrappy, its New York City. And finally, Colombia is located in the richest city in the world in every sense. Those quotes underscore the point on which I'd like to end. When we chose to come to this institution, we chose to come to Columbia University in the city of New York. And like our campuses, New York is much more than a collection of buildings. It's a rich and diverse community of people, the most extraordinary collection of people you'll find anywhere. And we are all New Yorkers now. <laughs> to quote our neighbor, Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of the musical, the creator of the musical about that other famous Colombian, Alexander Hamilton. Look around, look around. History is happening in Manhattan, and we just happen to be in the greatest city in the world. Welcome to New York. Welcome to Colombia. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Shafiq. Uh, and can we give just an incredibly loud and spirited welcome round of applause for our new president? It is now my pleasure to introduce Kristen Crom, Dean of Undergraduate Student Life, again. Yes. <laughs> In her role, Dean Crom works with multicultural affairs, residential life, and student engagement to enrich the undergraduate student experience here. She lives right here uh, on campus in Wall Wallach Hall, so you will see her. <laughs> You will see her out and about on South Lawn um, with uh, her children, her dogs, um, and very much a part of the, the Columbia community. Please welcome Dean Crom to the podium to share her own words of welcome. As con words of welcome as convocation comes to a close and so that she can officially commence and sob. <laughs> Oh no. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Love it. 
I am thrilled to be up here to welcome you, class of 2027. You've, you've been warmly and enthusiastically greeted by so many throughout the day and tonight. And while Carolyn already thanked our student leaders, I'd also like to recognize the staff within Columbia College and Columbia Engineering throughout the university, including dining, facilities, housing, public safety, who made today possible. And of course, my own team in undergraduate student life, up countless hours, and the orientation committee and crew captains, orientation leaders, and resident advisors who are here too. I know from conversations outside of Carmen and John Jay, inside Wallach and Fernald, that you are feeling all the things, excited, nervous, overwhelmed, exhausted, and there's no right or wrong way to have felt earlier or now as we move towards the closing of this ceremony, when our students will begin NSOP and our families will depart campus for now. There's no right way to feel as you say goodbye or even this entire semester as you transition. I recall when I started my own college journey, once I got past the tears, yes, torrential amounts of tears as my mom drove away, I was filled with so many ideas about who I was, who I wasn't, what I might do. I had a lot of what I would never do and I imagine you too have expectations about what Columbia and your college experience will be. And surely, it's good to have a plan and goals and expectations. However, I also encourage you to live in the moment, put your phones down every once in a while, and, <laughs> and change and adapt your expectations as you immerse into our community. You hail from the world's smallest towns and largest cities. You have ideas from a broad base of religious and political perspective. You've been homeschooled, been in public schools, private and boarding schools, and have such a wide array of familial backgrounds. And by later this evening, you'll have the opportunity to begin to get to know each other in your orientation group and on your floor. Take advantage of the diversity amongst us, as sometimes our greatest lessons and strongest bonds are with people from completely different backgrounds or perspectives. Clearly, that is a theme from the folks on the stage tonight. There's so much to learn from each other. Lean in, challenge those assumptions, discover new passions, take risks, make mistakes, and grow into the best version of yourselves. Surely focus on your academics, but get involved in the community, prioritize your well-being, and care for each other. And let me say that one again. Prioritize your well-being and care for each other. <laughs> Living in a... <laughs> I love that. Uh, living in a community, you must think beyond yourself. You need to consider the impact of your words and actions. And yes, sometimes it does mean we have difficult conversations, but the learning in those moments can offer lessons for a lifetime. And as others have said, there are so many resources here to support you and so many opportunities in the years ahead. And one such opportunity that lies ahead of you now is finding where you find, where you feel most at home at Columbia. For me, as you heard, Wallach Hall is home. My daughter, who is who is 18, and my son, a high school sophomore, have grown up within these gates. And my daughter began her own college journey on Friday when I sat in your seat for convocation at another school. At Columbia, your involvement outside the classroom will be an important part of the home you create here. 
There are so many choices, hundreds of them, in fact. You may select cultural, political, performance, pre-professional, publication groups. You might join a religious community, an identity community, a club sport, a fraternity, or a sorority. You might run for student council or get involved in your residence hall. And there's no right or wrong way to do it, just your way. And student leaders in each of those communities and the staff advisors who support them, we are all here for you, ready to share in your successes, encourage you along the way, and remind you of the resources that are here when you need them. So families, to you I offer thanks for raising incredibly thoughtful, compassion, and dedicated students. I assure you that you are leaving your children, rather young adults, in caring hands and a dedicated team. And students, to you I offer, thank you for choosing Columbia and being the kind of people that motivate me every single day. Look around, take in this moment. You will begin growing roots with classmates and neighbors seated with you under this tent. How will you get involved? How will you give back? How will you change? How will you grow? I look forward to the next few years together learning how you answer these questions. And now, to close our program, I would like to invite the Clef Hangers, a co-ed a cappella group, to lead us in singing our fight song, Roar, Lion, Roar. You will find the words in the back of your program. And then after the academic recessional, following the fight song, we ask that parents, families, and loved ones all take a few moments to say goodbye for now as students will depart to officially begin their NSOP experience. Once again, welcome class of 2027. And please join me in a warm Columbia welcome for the Clef Hangers. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats until the stage party has risen. Families, it is now time to say goodbye to your students. 
New Columbia students, after that time, please proceed to the South Lawn to meet your orientation groups. Thank you, and have a good night.